All right. Hello, everyone. We hope that you are doing well today. And welcome to Dorn's Live Preparing for Registration Information Session webinar. It will be hosted by Dorn Saib, um Graduate Assistants for First Year Advising. We currently do have myself, I'm Irene, and one of the graduate assistants. We also have Carla and Christian, who will be also helping me um, host this webinar. Please, um, I will ask for students to keep their microphones muted. We will be hosting the questions and answers until the end of the presentation. So we will just ask, kindly ask you guys to just hold off until then, and we will be able to um, answer any questions or concerns that you may have at the moment. And also, um, please adjust your Zoom name just so we can check in with you in case, you know, we just want to make sure that your name reflects who you really are on the Zoom. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to hand it off to Carla. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome once more for the Preparing for Registration info session. So before jumping in, I wanted to take some time to let you all know about where you can find the information we will be discussing today, along with additional resources to help guide your first year experience. If you go to the Dorns Life Undergraduate Academic Advising site, then click or hover your mouse over the first year advising tab, you will find the first year corner option. First year corner is your first year hub it is constantly being updated to ensure you have the most up-to-date information about current FYE events. This is where you can find your monthly first-year advising newsletter too. You will there be able to find helpful videos, handouts relating to course registration, preparing for advising appointments, even how to talk to professors. This is a resource that has been created for you, so please make sure to check it out. Next, I wanted to provide an overview of what we will be covering in today's event. So first we will begin with pre-registration advising. This will entail learning a little bit more about what pre-registration advising is and what to expect. We will also be discussing your first year advisor, how to know who your first year advisor is and where to find out more information about them. And once you have located who your advisor is, we will discuss the appointment scheduling process and the necessary steps you should take to secure a pre-registration appointment. Following that, we will delve deeper into how to prepare for your pre-registration advising appointment. So this includes how to navigate your STARS report, how to look for any holds on your account, if you may have any, and some questions you may want to consider asking your advisor when you attend these appointments. And once that has all been covered, we'll provide an overview of the registration process, such as how to know when your registration permit time and date is, how to register for your courses through web registration to ensure that you are able to register for your courses next semester. In addition, we will take some time to discuss placement exams in case you may need to take any priority registration for your respective courses. Lastly, as was previously mentioned by Irene, please keep in mind that at the end of this presentation, we will have some time for Q&A. So we encourage you to send any messages you may have throughout the presentation on the Q&A tab on the bottom of your Zoom page. We will also have a student ambassador that will help provide the student perspective too. So please feel free to ask any student related questions as well about registration. So what is pre-registration? It is an advising appointment that takes place with your first year advisor prior to your permit to register time and date. Now you may be asking, why is pre-registration advising important? So pre-registration advising is important given that it is a mandatory advising appointment that takes place to ensure that you have a plan for the next semester with the necessary courses to ensure you are meeting your degree requirements. Please note that Failure to attend a pre-registration advising appointment will place a hold on your account that will impact your ability to register for classes. Now you might be wondering, when should I schedule an appointment? So as of today, you should have all received an email from your first year advisor regarding pre-registration advising. Please make sure to read the email in its entirety and follow the instructions regarding making appointments. 
you should be able to start making appointments today, but please keep in mind that your appointments should be before your permit to register. Now, who is my first year advisor? As some of you may recall, you're, you were working with the advisor that you were working in during the summer may have changed at the start of the school year. So you all have been assigned a first year advisor that will be your point of contact for the remainder of the first year. In case you don't know who your first year advisor, please log into my USC with your USC credentials. And once you're all logged in, you will then click on Advise USC. Once on Advise USC, you will find the Advisor Connect tab, uh, as you can see on the images on this slide. And from there, you will scroll down to My Success Team. And from there, you should be able to view your advisor. And once you have found your advisor, you will find that it is one of these lovely people on the screen. Um, and here you will be able to actually find out a little bit more information about your adv advisor if you are interested or curious. So if you were to go back to the Dorn's Life Undergraduate Academic Advising site once more, like we did for the First Year Corner resource, and then click on First Year Advising, you will find the Meet the FYA team, and you will have the opportunity to scroll, see all the First Year Advising advisors, and learn some fun facts about them. And next, I will hand it off to Christian. Right, next I wanna talk about scheduling an appointment. First, you're going to visit usc.edu slash advice and then put your login information, then sign in. Once you are logged in to Advise USC, click on schedule an appointment. Once you have done that, find and click on your advisor's name. So you will see a topic to select. Uh, from there, please select undergraduate advice. After you've done that, please select a subtopic. Um, that sub subtopic should be mandatory advising. If you choose a topic other than mandatory advising, you will not see any availability from your assigned advisor between now and November 15th. Advisors will resume Explore and more appointments after November 15th. Next step, you will select the date and time of your appointment based on your advisor's availability. You may also filter an advisor's availability based on location and appointment type. You will then select the location of your appointment and include any comments that would be helpful for your advisor to know prior to your meeting. Lastly, click on schedule an appointment to reserve your appointment time. Check your USC email for confirmation of your scheduled appointment. As Carla has, men has mentioned uh, previously, failure to attend a pre-registration advising appointment will prevent you from registering for classes. So please make sure to do that. So an important part of preparing for pre-registration and advising is to review your STARS report. You can view your STARS report by first logging into My USC. Once you are logged in, uh, navigate to OASIS and then click STARS report. Information provided on your STARS report includes completed degree requirements, degree requirements in progress, outstanding degree requirements, and units needed and completed for degree completion, GPA, coursework, transferred, and more. Once you have accessed your STARS report, you will see a lot of blue and or red text, as you can see here. So here's an example of what a STARS report looks like. Let me move on to the next one. So the, the blue text identifies degree requirements that are in progress or have been completed. And the red text identifies requirements that need to be completed in order to graduate. As you can see, another example of a SARS report here. Um, so the top of the SARS report lists all the courses that the student is currently taking. 
note the IP in the blue text stands for in progress. Below that list the number of upper division units, in this case 32, required for degree completion. Because the student is a freshman, the student has earned zero. Below that list, the GPA required for all USC baccalaureate units, which is a 2.0. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah. Yes, 2.0. So below that is list the Dornsife unit role requirement, which is that 104 of your 120 units must be earned in Dornsife. This rule is different for students pursuing a minor or a second bachelor's degree or a double major in another professional school. Please consult your first year advisor for more information. As you can see, the STARS report will consider completed coursework at USC, transfer credit such as AP, IB, or A-level scores, and assume in-progress coursework. If you notice something wrong with your STARS report, please make sure to bring it up to your first year advisor during your pre-registration meeting. So an important part of preparing for your pre-registration advising is to review your holds. You can view your holds by first logging into My USC. From there, and when you're logged in, you can navigate to Oasis and then click Restrictions. You can see the example here on the slide. You can also click on Web Registration and view your holds there. So it's another option for you to pursue. Reviewing your holds is important because you can work with your advisor to resolve them in a timely manner and some holds may restrict regulation registration. So it's important to resolve them before your registration date. Typically, you all will have an immunization hold if you have not submitted proof of your immunization. If you have not done so, please do it as soon as possible as the processing time could take some time. And go ahead and hand it over to Irene. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and be speaking about the registration process as well as the placement exams. Um, just to kind of go back to kind of what um, Christian was saying, just make sure that you also prepare questions for your registration appointment. So here are some kind of like examples of certain questions that you may ask for your advisor. However, it's not specifically to these questions. You are able to ask any questions or concerns you may have, and they'll be more than happy to assist you with it. So let's go ahead and dive in the registration aspect. So I know that there was a student who also did ask, where do I find my registration time and date? Well, if you go to your My USC portal and you go onto your OASIS, then you're going to scroll down and you're going to see the permit to register. So in that permit to register, you'll be able to find the date and time that you'll be able to register for your courses. If you guys do see here next to that um, image of the permit to register, there's registration appointment schedule. So this is for spring 2025. So this chart shows you and gives you an idea of when your registration is per your completed units. So these go according to the, the units you have currently completed. So just note that your current schedule is not included because you have not yet completed those courses and grades have not yet been posted. And then the web registration is on my USC portal. So you will go into your My USC portal and then you'll click on web registration. And then um, after that, you will be able to look into the different courses that are offered and the different times that are being offered during that spring 25 academic semester. So when you go onto web registration, you'll be able to um, click on the web registration, select the term you are currently enrolling for, make sure it's spring 2025 and not fall 2024 because I made that mistake once. So just an FYI, just be mindful of that. And then you'll still be able to look through the course um, courses offered. So just make sure that you would um, go to the um, current department you are interested in. So for example, if let's say you are with Viterbi, then you will go to Viterbi School Engineering and then you'll look for your classes there. And you would also, um, Again, be seeing all the classes that are under Dornsife College of Letters, Arts and Sciences categories, where there you will search for your major since you are under Dornsife. And you can also go to the GE requirements for students beginning college fall 2015 or after for your GE courses. So just be careful with that because there's two options and you are fall um, after fall um, 2015 or later. Please note though that there are also different types of courses. 
So if it's a course like Econ 203, it has a lecture and discussion options, you need to sign up for one lecture and one discussion. Your course registration will not go through if you do not have all the components of a course. So if you guys notice in the picture, this shows a type. So there's lecture, discussions, and then another lecture and discussions. So just be mindful of that. And then you, um, you need to make sure you are choosing the correlating discussion to the lecture you have chosen. And you can only choose a discussion that is directly below the lecture. As it is shown here, there's the lecture and then there's an arrow. So those are discussions that you can choose for the lecture. And if you do have any questions, make sure, again, you can always go ahead and reach out to your um, advisor to ensure you are getting the classes that you do need. All right, so this is another one that you do need to pay close attention is to the section numbers. So these are the, the sections that end with R, means you are able to freely register in those courses as long as there's um, space and you have satisfied the prerequisite if applicable. But if you do look at the one on the bottom, it has a D, and that means that you need D clearance in order to be able to enroll. So you will need to request D clearance and be given D clearance to be able to register for the course. And again, if you have questions or any questions or concerns about regarding those D clearances, feel free to reach out to your advisor and they can assist you with that. Okay, now this one, before officially enrolling into your courses, you need to ensure that there's no conflicts between your courses um, when wanting to enroll because then there is a tab under the web reg where you can go ahead and click on my calendar and then you are able to check for any courses that may overlap and you are still able to fix them before you officially register or at least try to. And just be mindful that if there are overlapping courses, it will not allow you to register. And just keep in mind the difference between scheduling and registering. So this is a pretty cool thing about the calendar. There's color-coded things. So there's yellows for scheduled, green is for registered, and then gray is for appointment and R is for, I mean, yeah, red is for conflict. I'm sorry about that. And then you can check there if um, nothing overlaps. So if it's still yellow, it is it means that it's only scheduled, but you're not registered. You will be registered until you have scheduled the courses and then you go back and click register. Once you have clicked register, then you can double check on your calendar. And if it's all green, then you're good to go. All right, the another subject we'll be speaking about is placement exams. So placement exams, um, just to make sure you have completed the, the placement exams that you need. And if you are unsure which one you still need, you may check in with your advisor or check your STARS report on your USC portal. The foreign language exam, you can obtain information by visiting Dornside Language at USC, where you can check for the next exam date. But in case you need more information, you can always visit language at USC events page, which I will show you in the um, future slides. So, and just keep in mind, too, that there is a six-month wait to retake the exam. So if you do take the exam and you are interested in retaking it, there is a six-month wait. So um, here in this, in this slide, you can see that we have the visit language at USC events. And then here it gives you kind of directions of how um, you can take the placement exam and different notes. So here you have check language. So you can check a language at USC events. And then... Um, you, here's another thing is that there's no fee for taking the placement exam. You can write 10 minutes before the exam starts. The exam can take up to two hours, so make sure to plan accordingly. And then you must bring your USC ID to the exam. And there are no exams after the first week of classes until after the add and drop deadlines have passed. And then do also, if you do need the OSAS accommodation, make sure to notify them two weeks in advance. Again, please make sure to take the math and chemistry placement exams to ensure you take the courses needed. We recommend you to take the exams prior to registering for your classes. This will also help you um, be able to take the course that you want rather than having to take the placement exam later and not allowing you to take the course that best fits your schedule. Better sooner than later. So just make sure you have completed those placement exams. Okay. And here, the upcoming placement exams, we have the FLAN, math, and chemistry, so the foreign language, 
math and chemistry. So the foreign language are in person while math and chemistry are online. And placement exams may take approximately 10 days to receive your score. So the foreign language ex um, placement exam is valid for a year. The chemistry scores are valid for two years and the math scores never expire. So that's pretty cool that the math scores at least don't expire so you don't have to um, retake it unless, I'm not sure if there's another protocol if students want to retake it, but um, here kind of gives you an idea of the dates. So for example, here for the foreign language exam, you have, um, the next one will be October 25th. And um, there's another one as well for, for, for November 8th. So you always wanna just check in to ensure you get the most accurate dates as well. Okay, so here is a sample of a uh, spring semester schedule. And um, just keep in mind as well that you need to have completed the foreign language requirement through the placement exam or the foreign language course, or depending if you are international students, you have an international student status. Um, before reaching um, 64 units at USC. So that needs to be completed before you reach the 64 units. So here's a sample course for spring as we recommend it to students to aim for the 60 units per semester. So the flat rate tuition is from 12 to 18 units. So you can add an optional one to two unit elective to your course load if you want. Just keep in mind that this is a sample course plan and everyone's will look different depending on your educational goals. You and your advisor will discuss more specific courses during your mandatory pre-registration advising appointment as well.